Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be looking at IGCSE and GCSE differentiation past exam questions. <coughs> Make sure you've looked at my previous video which shows you actually the methodology used because this really is just exam practice. Martin's mum Leslie's back and she's going to be showing us how to do them. Okay, so let's start with the easy ones at the very beginning. We're given y equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5 and we need to find dy by dx. So to differentiate, if you remember, each time you bring the power to the front and take one away from the power. So up here, the x cubed would become 3x squared, but I've got a 2 in front of it as well. So it's 2 lots of 3, I get 6x squared plus, and then for the next term, bring the 2 to the front, 3 times 2 is 6 again, x, 1 away from the power, 2 take away 1 leaves you 1, and you don't need to write the 1 as a power, you can just leave it as x. And then if you differentiate a number, minus 5, it just disappears. So starting with y equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5, we finish with dy by dx is 6x squared plus 6x. Similar in the second question, again we're given the equation of a curve. For this curve, we want to find dy by dx, bring the power to the front, take one away from the power, so bring the 2 to the front, x, 2 take away 1 is 1, and again you don't write the power in, minus, in the second term, the 4x term, the power of x there is 1, so bringing the 1 to the front, 4 times 1 is 4, x to the power 0, but anything to the power 0 is just the number 1. So when you differentiate 4x, you just get the 4. And then differentiate plus 1, you end up with 0. To find the coordinates of the turning point, now if you remember, one of the meanings of dy by dx is that it's the gradient function of the curve. So at a turning point, the gradient is 0. So we want to find where 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. Add 4 to both sides, 2x is 4. Divide both sides by 2, x is 2. So we know that the x coordinate of our turning point is 2. To find the y coordinate, we need to go back to the equation of the curve and put in, instead of x, we're going to put the value 2. So we need to work out 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 1. So it's 4 minus 8 plus 1, which is minus 3. So our turning point is 2 minus 3. State with a reason whether the turning point is a maximum or a minimum. Now again, if you remember, for maximum you're looking at a shape like that, and for minimum you're looking for a shape like that. If you look back to the original curve equation, y equals x squared minus 4x plus 1, that curve is a U-shape. So the point we have found is a minimum. So our turning point is a minimum, and a reason is that the curve is a quadratic curve where x squared has a positive coefficient. Find the equation of the line of symmetry of the curve y equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now we know our curve looks like that. We know our minimum point is at 2 minus 3 and the line of symmetry comes down through the minimum point. So the equation of that line of symmetry, every single point on the line has the x coordinate 2, so its equation is x equals 2. Next question, number 3. Find dy by dx, exactly the same process again. Bring the power to the front, take one away from the power. So we have the first term is 4x cubed. So the 3 comes to the front, 4 times 3 is 12x. And then the power, 3 take away 2 is 1. Minus, differentiating the next term, which is 2x to the power 1, 
Bring the one to the front, two times one is two. Take one away from the power, gives us x to the power zero, and anything to the power zero is just one. So you just get left with 12x squared minus two. Find the coordinates of the two points on the curve where the gradient of the curve is one. dy by dx represents the gradient function. So we are trying to find the two points where 12x squared minus two is equal to one. So we're going to take the two to the other side, add two to both sides. 12x squared equals three. Divide both sides by 12 x squared is 3 over 12, which will cancel down to give me a quarter. Square rooting that, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2. So x is a half, or, and this is the part that gets forgotten, when you square root, you can also have a negative value, so x can be minus a half. So we know that our first value of x is a half and our second value is minus a half. To find the y coordinate, we have to substitute this back into the equation of the curve. So with x is a half, it's four times a half cubed and a half times a half times a half is an eighth minus two times a half plus five. Four times an eighth is a half, so it's a half 2 times a half is 1, plus 5. When x is a half, y is 4 and a half. And the same thing, but this time, starting with our x value of minus a half, this time y is equal to, if you cube minus a half, you get minus an eighth. Then... Substituting minus a half into the next term will change that sign into a positive sign, plus five. So we get minus a half plus one plus five, which is five and a half. So there we have our two coordinates where the gradient of the curve is one. Okay, in the next question, Find the gradient of the curve at the point 2 minus 3. That means, first of all, we have to find an expression for the gradient of the curve. And to find an expression for the gradient of the curve, we need to differentiate. So when you differentiate, differentiate x cubed, you get 3x squared. Differentiate 5x squared, you get 10x to the power 1. Differentiate plus 8x you just get plus 8. Differentiate the minus 7, you get nothing. We want the gradient where x is 2, so putting 2 into this, we get when x equals 2, we'll get 3 times 2 squared minus 10 times 2 plus 8, which is 3 times 4, which is 12, minus 20 plus 8, which gives us zero. So the gradient of the curve where x is two is zero. The fact that y is minus three doesn't play any part in the gradient. What does the answer to part A tell you about the top point two minus three? Well, because the gradient is zero, that tells us we have a turning point. Number five is a slightly different use of differentiating. The process is the same, but we are using different letters and this time you have to remember the first equation connects distance and time. When you differentiate distance, you get an expression for velocity. And when you differentiate velocity, you get an expression for acceleration. So to get an expression for the velocity, we're going to use the fact that the velocity is ds by dt. So differentiating is normal. Don't worry about the letter being different. You bring the power to the front, take one away from the power. So differentiate t cubed, you get 3t squared, minus differentiate 6t, you just get 6. Differentiate plus 3, it goes. So the velocity is 3t squared minus 6. So v equals 3t squared minus 6. Then to get an, find the acceleration, 
the acceleration is dv by dt. So I'm differentiating the expression I just found, bring the power to the front, take one away from the power, so it gives me 6t. If I differentiate minus 6, it just disappears. So the acceleration is just 6t. Number 6, just ordinary differentiating, except this time you've got to be familiar with powers as well. So differentiating with respect to x, if you start off with 5x squared, bring the power to the front, take one away from the power. When you differentiate, you get 10x. 3 over x, you first of all have to rewrite. When 1 over x is written, you get 3x to the power minus 1. So we're going to be differentiating 3x to the power minus 1. So bring the power to the front, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3x. Then take one away from the power, minus 1, take away another one, will give me minus 2. And you can leave it like that. If you want to write it back in the same format as you started with, then it's minus 3 over x squared. The square root of x, this time rewriting as a power of x, gives you x to the power a half. Differentiating the same again, bring the power to the front, a half x, then take one away from the power, a half minus a one gives you minus a half. So it's a half x to the minus a half. And again, you can leave it like that, or if you're feeling really confident, you can write it as one over two x to the half, and a stage further is one over two root x. Getting slightly harder, the graph shows the curve of y equals x cubed minus 12x plus 17. A is the maximum, C is the minimum, and B is where it crosses the y-axis. There's the equation of the curve, find dy by dx. So to find dy by dx, ordinary differentiating. If you differentiate x cubed, bring the power to the front, take 1 away from the power, you get 3x squared. Differentiate minus 12x just gives you minus 12. Differentiate the 17, it just disappears. Find the gradient of the curve at B. Now, to find the gradient of the curve at B, you need to know what the value of x is at B. B crosses the y-axis, and every point on the y-axis has the x value being 0. So to find the gradient of the curve at that point, all we're going to put, do is take the value of x to be 0, so your gradient will be 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 12, so your gradient is minus 12. Find the coordinates of A and C. A and C are both turning points, and at turning points, the gradient of a curve is 0, so our gradient is 3x squared minus 12, and we need to find where that is equal to 0, Add 12 to both sides, 3x squared is equal to 12, divide both sides by 3, x squared is 12 over 3, which is 4, square root, and remember you get two values, the positive and the negative, so x is 2 or minus 2. So we now have to find the y value for each of these x values, and our curve is y equals x cubed minus 12x plus 17. So if I put x is 2, 2 cubed is 8, 12 times 2 is 24, plus 17 gives me y is equal to 1. And if I put x is minus 2, minus 2 cubed is minus 8, minus 12 times minus 2 gives me plus 24, and I've still got the plus 17 at the end, so I will get 33. So we have our two turning points. If you look at the sketch of the graph, then clearly A is the lower value of x. So A is where x is minus 2. So at A, x is minus 2 and y is 33. At C, x is 2 and y is 1. So there we have our two turning points. <laughs>